one. Oh. Good morning, folks. I'll try that one again. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to our service this morning. This is our United celebration. Um, and just before we get started, if we go to the next slide there, Bill, please. Go to the second slide and swap the displays over. Um, the fire evacuation policy. It's wonderful to start with that and then also the fire evacuation policy. Should a fire occur, or if there was ever to be a fire drill in this place, okay? Um, you need to leave through the green exits, um, either the door you came in or the two, the two doors on this side, this door, or also if the playroom doors are open, you can also go directly through the playroom doors. Should there ever, ever, ever be a, um, a fire drill, whether it be at the start of the service or at the, at the end of the service, um, okay? So there we go. Um, so that's the fire evacuation. In such a possible scenario, Thank you, Matt. Um, so we are to gather beside the bike shed, the bike hut. Uh, there's a there's a sign that says fire assembly point. So we go out and we go to the fire assembly point beside the bike shed. Okay, excellent. So um, you are all very welcome here. Um, today is our United Celebration. And so, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, we have four churches uh, in this parish. One in Inniscarra, one out in uh, Carrigrawan, one in Blarney, and here at the Carrig Centre. And once a while, one, on the fifth, generally on the fifth Sundays of the month, we all come together for um, a service. And it's slightly different from any of the other services that happen across the Union. And, and um, we try on these Sundays to, uh, to combine the riches of the different traditions that we have here in Carrigrawan. And also offers us the opportunity to find out for those who either regularly um, come here or go to other places, who we are, and if we go to the next slide there. So as Carrigrawan Union of Parishes, we are, we are members drawn fr from near and far, people from all over the world, each of our four congregations. So the four, the four churches, we seek to be centered on the life and teaching of Jesus, to grow in his love together and express his love in action. And it's those things that we do together as, as the team of Carrigrawan Union of Parishes that is so important. So today, uh, Matt is going to be speaking, and we're going to look at the theme in Psalm 1 of trees planted by the stream. And I, got a, I found this photograph, which was, which was lovely, of um, the regional park and the trees planted by the river of soaking up the, uh, uh, the water within their roots to grow and to develop. And we see that time and again in scripture, trees being so vitally important, both for producing fruit, but also for shade and for all of the other attributes that um, trees do bring to us. And today we're focusing in that we are called to be people who are planted by streams of living water. We're here, there's been lots of stuff going on, and we're here to worship God. And I just want to take a moment to pause, take a moment to think about what has been going on this week, those things that have gone well, those things that we have been struggling with, and just taking a time to come to God. We just take a moment of silence before we begin. Mm -hmm. 
we take a moment as we think of how we maybe have struggled to live up to God's ways that he has called us to. And we, inv- we invite the Holy Spirit to come. We go to the next slide there. I invite you to join in the bits in blue. Come, Holy Spirit of God, and search our hearts with the light of Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second commandment is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Together we pray. Holy God, holy and strong, Holy and immortal, have mercy on us. As far as the east is from the west, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord is merciful towards those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Let's stand together. And we'll get the worship group to come up. And I'll just say together, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Let's worship God together. So we're going to start this morning with um, a block of three songs together. And my thought in choosing these three songs was the first one is the splendor of the king. And it's just a reminder of how incredible and awesome and amazing and majestic our God is. Um, The second one is boldly I approach your throne. Um, A reminder just of, it's just a gift of grace that we're allowed to come and to worship. And then the third one is just a great praise and worship song, bless the Lord, oh my soul. So that's probably just let those three um, go together and that's the thinking behind them.
Father, we thank you so much for that welcome into your arms this morning. Thank you that even though we don't deserve it, you have sent Jesus and made a way for us. And we thank you. Let's take our seats. The 
going to invite us all to read our reading together, which is uh, Psalm 1. And we'll read this. Yeah, we'll read this together. So we say, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Going to invite Matt uh, to come up as, uh, and as he does, we'll simply pray for him. Pray for us as, as well. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for Matt. We thank you, Lord, for what he has, uh, what you have planted in his heart today. And we simply pray, Lord, for us, that you would help us to take your word and to, to, and to take responsibility for that word in our lives. We pray the, this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, welcome, everyone. Can you hear me okay at the back? Is that all right? That's coming through. Fantastic. So um, just for those who don't know, uh, my name is Matt Gould. I'm the uh, community leader here at the Carrig Center, and I'm also the lead evangelist with the uh, partner organization here, uh, Church Army, and it's just a real pleasure to welcome you. Whether you've been coming for years and years and years, or whether you're just visiting, it's a real pleasure and a delight to see you. Before we kick off, I just want to uh, add my congratulations to Sarah Louise, uh, my friend, ministry colleague, and David, uh, for their uh, engagement today. Really exciting. <laughs> Fantastic. I think that is the appropriate amount of whooping. It's good. It's good. We, uh, it's wonderful. We get, to, we get to celebrate today. It's not every day one of our, our, our church family get engaged, so it's, it's a real uh, pleasure, and congrats to you guys. Enjoy. Good. So, let's, uh, without further ado, then, let's dive into Psalm 1. If you have Bibles with you, do grab them. If you want to get the text on your phone, uh, Psalm 1 is where we're going. Um, Bill's on the slides. Bill, if you want to follow along with the reading slides, that's absolutely fine. Do that as we go. So, through this psalm, we are asked a really big question, and that is, what are you soaking up? What are you soaking up? There is a, there is a contrast here in this psalm between the walking, the standing, and the sitting with mockers and sinners verse 1, with a delight in God's law in verse 2. So just like in Eden, we've been um, working our way through Genesis 1 to 3 uh, in, in our, um, in our service, services here. And don't worry, guys, I know we're three weeks out from our series. We haven't forgotten. We've got two more weeks coming up in Genesis chapter 3 starting uh, next week. But just like in Eden, mankind is given a choice. We're not forced into walking God's way. We can choose who or what we're keeping in step with. So, so verse 1, uh, walking in step, it's like following along. Um, maybe some, some Instagram celebrity or some TikTok you know, legends. We, we follow along. And that's fine. There's creativity and whatever there. But we can also find ourselves soaking up worldviews and ideas that just are cynical towards the things of God. Uh, standing with, with the mockers and the sinners. Can I tell you a story about two, two, two guys standing by watching on? Do you remember when we had the floods here in Cork, um, when the dam had to release a ton of water and it coincided with like the spring tide? and half of Cork City was flooded, and there was a big hoo-ha as to who was responsible and so on. Does anyone know what year that was? I feel like it was 2010, 11, some... 2009. 
2009. Okay, it's 2009. Good long while ago. Okay, let me tell you a story about that. So um, the flood happened, and I thought I'd go for a bike ride to just kind of explore and see what happened. And down by the, uh, the road where the Angler's Rest is, um, there was an absolute torrent of water where the, all the water had, had kind of leapt out of the river and flooded the surrounding fields, and they were just piling across the, uh, across the road. You couldn't pass it. So I cycled down there, and there were these two old boys kind of leaning against the wall, just, just kind of watching. And I said, uh, hi, guys. We got chatting, whatever. And they said to me, are you going to try and... I was on my bike. They said, are you going to try and cycle through? And I was like, are you mad? I'd get swept off my bike. I'd, I'd be in real trouble. And they went, oh, OK, OK. And then we carried on chatting for a couple more minutes. And then they said, I said to them, do you think anyone will come through? And they said, well... About half an hour before you came past, a guy tried to cycle through, got swept off his bike, had to cling onto a tree, and was holding on for dear life. And I'm thinking, lads, you kind of encouraged me to go through a few minutes ago. What are you doing? So, you know, standing with the, the two old boys watching by, uh, thinking it would be um, a bit of entertainment. Um, and then there's sitting in the, the company of mockers. So it's, sitting is like dwelling, remaining, abiding. You know when you sit with someone, you kind of settle? It's a shared time. It's a kind of a settled conviction. So that's, that's verse 1, the mocking, the cynical, um, uh, the kind of pouring scorn. And then there's verse 2, a delight in the law of the Lord. Now, this doesn't simply mean a deep dive into the obscure bits of Deuteronomy or Leviticus. We can rightly understand God's law in the way that Psalm 119 puts it. Uh, God's law is God's decrees, commands, statutes. In other words, his word. And that means immersing ourselves in God's story. Meditating on it, uh, verse 2 puts it. Um, Christian meditation is absolutely a thing. It's been a spiritual practice for a lot, lot longer, at least in the West, than kind of sort of Eastern-influenced, trendy meditation. We can meditate, mull over thinking and feeling the, the meaning in these words. What might that look like? Well, have you ever really got into a, a TV or movie series? So you're watching the programs, but that's not enough. You, you dive into the world. You want to find out about the characters and the backstories. Um, so for me, the Marvel Cinematic Universe was like a thing. It's candy floss, superhero movies. But because it lives in this kind of comic world, there's tons of information about the characters. And while these movies were coming out, I was like watching the kind of the fan videos on YouTube, geeking out about the little Easter eggs and the little details, diving into the, all, the, all the stuff. Well... This psalm uh, says to do that with God's word and his big, big story that we get to be part of, delighting in it. So, by the way, uh, what this psalm is suggesting that we do individually is also what we strive uh, to do when we gather. We're trying to unpack, explain, and apply the scriptures that are, uh, that are good in pointing us to God and training us in the way to go. This uh, kind of method of preaching is called expository preaching, where the main point of the talk is really the main point of the passage, and it really flows directly from that. And I, for one, think it is much more powerful and solid than the occasional topic-based ramble that you might hear from time to time. So... Uh, what is the effect, then, of immersing ourselves in God's law, delighting in his word and story? Well, verse 3 gives us the picture, doesn't it? It's of a tree planted by streams of water, like Robert had earlier on. It's lush, not withered, but abundant, fruitful. And that picture of the, the fruitful tree is framed by the first word in our psalm, blessed, blessed, happy, content, blessed. It's a beautiful picture, isn't it? The tree doesn't have to rush, strive, or struggle. It is planted, graceful, rooted. 
its fruitfulness comes from resting by the stream. And the psalmist says we can be like the tree when we rest in God's word, delighting in it. Now, if I had a fairly big production budget, I would go out and buy two big trees, one of which I would um, have in kind of water with like plant food and stuff, and it would look all green and lush, and the other would sort of be a bit abandoned, and the leaves would be withered or falling off. Can you picture it? Okay, so that's the idea. Imagine if you visited a garden center and there's kind of one of those trees tucked by the corner and it's a bit, it's a bit sad and, and forgotten. I don't have the production budget for two trees, but I do have these roses. So here is uh, a few flowers and um, they're a few days old in the water, but they are soaking up the water and that's them. Here is one of the roses. I've not done anything to it other than put it in some water with some blue food coloring. I was texting Mel, our resident flower expert, saying, is this going to work? I hope so. Anyway, she said, yeah, probably will. Can you see from the the contrast there that the rose in the blue water has picked up the color of the water? It's soaked it up. I was very tempted to kind of dip it in the food coloring just to really make the... But this is... All I've done to this is put it in the water. And it's soaking up the food coloring, and there's a blue tint uh, on it. That's the effect of uh, us soaking up, resting in God's word. Well, there's a contrast then in our psalm um, with the fruitful tree planted in good streams or the person who's like a fruitful tree. The wicked in verse 4 are going to be like chaff blown away. Now, I'm not a farmer. Uh, those of you who know me, like, uh, I'm a city boy born and bred. Um, so I had to do a bit of digging on, on this and find out what's going on. Back in the day, um, if you wanted to sort out the good grain from all the stalks and the leafy bits that you didn't want going into your bread, what you would do is you would throw it all up in the air. And the grain would settle back on the ground. You would collect that and make your bread from it. But the chaff would get blown by the wind out of the way. And it was a way of sifting and sorting. And verse 5, the wicked will not be able to stand in judgment. So we see here a separating, uh, like the sheep and the goats that Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 5. And verse 5 introduces us to the idea of God's judgment. Now this is a big topic. Uh, I won't be able to do it justice just in a couple of minutes. Um, But if we want to know more about God's judgment, then I suggest we look to the cross where judgment fell. God is not capricious, angry, or vindictive, trying to catch us out and say, gotcha. No, he folds his righteous judgment back onto himself in the Trinity. He took upon himself the weight of sin and judgment in that moment of Jesus Christ's supreme sacrifice. His holiness and his righteous anger are not compromised, but they are fully satisfied at the cross. So if you want to know more about his judgment, look at the cross. Here's the thing. If you want to know more about his love, robust, solid, dependable, then also... Look to the cross, where Jesus voluntarily went as a sacrifice for me and for you and for them. Well, how can any of us be counted righteous? How on earth, we were singing earlier, boldly we approach the throne. How, how can we do that? We, we know the weight of sin in our lives. We confessed it earlier in our liturgy. We know God's holiness is is. is, is big and powerful, and we're not going to mess with that. So how can we stand? How can we be counted righteous? Well, any answer that that starts with, well, I, is in a bit of trouble. Well, I've been a member of the church for for decades. Well, I'm a fully paid up Anglican. Well, well, I even go to vestry meetings and work through through fabrics and finance and furnishing meetings. They're fantastic, by the way. Well, I, how can I as a fallen, flawed human being, or if I may be highly presumptuous for a moment, how can you as a fallen, flawed human being possibly hope to be called righteous? 
we know that nothing we, we uh, do fully accounts for that, that tainting, that twisting, that distorting of God's image that we all carry. There's not some magic quotients of vouchers from cornflakes box we can accrue to be called righteous. I suggest, folks, that the only answer that leads us to righteousness, in the words of Alistair Begg, says, because he. Because he was the righteous son of God. Because he went to the cross and paid the debt of sin. Because he defeated death and in his new life leads to our new creation. Because he is our great high priest representing us before the throne of God. Because he sends his spirit uh, uh, to be with us to all who believe. We are in him. Because he, not because I. So yes, we need to believe, we need to trust, we need to rely on and be dependent on the work of Jesus. Absolutely, that is the move of faith. But it's our trust in his work, the effects of which we gratefully receive with delight and humility marked by knowing our need of grace. John 1 verse 12 puts it like this, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So folks, this morning, if you're here and you're not yet a believer, can I encourage you to invite Christ into your life, to rest in his work, to say, not because I, but because he, and to root yourselves in that great story. Today is a great day for that move of faith. Maybe you've, you've, you've done that move of faith, maybe you've been baptized and, and, and you've been a, a believer and a Christian, but you know that you're perhaps not rooted in this story. And so today, come back and, and, and let yourself settle and those roots sink into his word. Verse six, the Lord uh, watches over this. He knows there are two ways and there is no other the righteous and the wicked. So, okay, what do we do with this this morning? Three quick points as I'm coming into land. First of all, let God's law, his word, lead you to the cross, where love and justice meet in the only way they can, with integrity to both, and a deep, holistic beauty that is just right and deeply satisfying. At bedrock in the world, the Bible claims is not an empty, meaningless drifting, but a life with purpose, deep meaning, and a fully rounded view of God's presence and his love. Now that move of faith may well invite a bit of mocking from those standing idly by. Well, okay. But look at what you gain. The confidence in resting in Christ and his work the deeper appreciation of his love and presence through his word and spirit at work. It's worth it. So that's the first point. Uh, Come to the cross. Secondly, be be planted where it's good. That question that I started with at the beginning, what are you soaking up? So it's easy to, to soak up tons of wider cultural norms and values without even really being aware. And some of those can be good, great, and creative, and fantastic, but some can be inherently cynical and empty, offering really nothing of substance but only mocking. So what are you going to soak up this summer? There are 62 days in July and August. How about a psalm or two a day? You'll see the range of human emotion uh, given by the psalmists. There's delight and joy and celebration and praise and there's hurt and there's pain and there's grief and there's questions and there's doubt and the psalmists bring that before the Lord and they find their answers in God's presence and his character. Folks, soaking yourself in the psalms this summer, well, that is not a bad thing to do in the next 62 days. Maybe, just maybe, you'll capture more of the depths of his character 
of the good father for yourself. And then lastly, can I encourage you to rest? Summertime is a good time to rest. Rest in the knowledge that as you orientate yourselves to God's voice in Scripture, you'll know and experience that reality of of verse 6 at the end of, of the psalm, that God is with you, that he sees you, that he's watching over you, that he knows you. Here's the source of delight, right? That whatever's going on in the midst of your life, we can know him and be known by him in turn. We're not anonymous, invisible, or inconsequential to God. He made us with with deep value, worth, and dignity as image bearers of him. There's meaning and purpose in our lives part of a bigger story, as we plant ourselves in that story that we can truly rest in. There's such nourishing beauty through his presence. It's like a well-planted tree next to a stream. It cannot help but be fruitful and lush and abundant. What a great picture for us to lean into this morning and this summer. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your words and your spirit who uh, point to your character. We thank you that you're present with us, that you help us to understand and take hold of these amazing truths in your word. We pray, Lord, for for the guidance and help of your spirit to do uh, what we're, we're called to do in this psalm, to delight in your, in your word, in your law, in your, your decrees. Help us to chew on verses and to meditate on them and to, to let them seep and settle into the depths of our being. Because, Lord, we yearn to be like that tree planted by streams, fruitful and abundant and lush. We thank you for the promise that your word and spirit are at work in our lives. So help us to take hold of these truths uh, in these days and weeks to come over the summer. In your name we pray. Amen. Our next song is based on the words of another psalm, Psalm Psalm 23, um, and the chorus uh, really emphasizes that decision to put our trust in, in the cross alone, in Jesus alone, in God alone.
Let's take our seats. I'm just going to come to a time of prayer as we reflect on what God has been speaking to us, realizing that God wants a relationship with us. He wants to hear what's on our hearts. So we just take a moment um, of silence as we bring before God our own prayers, those things that are burning within our hearts at this time. We lift our prayers to you, O Lord, for those things that are on our heart, those things we want to give thanks for, those things that are troubling us, realizing that you are the God who wants to hear from us. We also bring before God the needs of the world and his church in this community. We pray, Lord, for the worldwide church, for the church that we belong to, the Church of Ireland, for other churches in this community, asking for your help to grow in faith. We pray for all those who are currently undergoing a call to ministry and discerning that call. We pray for Andrew Coleman, who will be ordained this afternoon in this diocese. We pray for him and for his family. We pray, Lord, that you would guide us in our ministries as we live each day determined to spread the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away arrogance and hatred that infects the hearts of those who pursue war and violence and terrorism. Break down walls that separate us. Unite us in the bonds of love and peace. We pray today for peacemakers throughout the world, that they may bring hope out of despair and peace out of conflict. We also pray for the countless numbers of people who are affected by conflicts in our world today. We think particularly of Gaza and Ukraine, as well as the many other countries around the world where people live in fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father God, we pray for our families and friends, and especially for our young people, that they may grow up knowing love and hope valuing life and respecting others. We pray for all those who have just finished school for the year and for the excitement of the summer holidays that await them. We pray for all who are in this, the, a strange fear of life, waiting for exam results and thinking about where to go next. We pray for them and their families. We pray for those who are, will be joining us here in Ireland on holiday over the coming weeks. And for all those who are going on holiday, praying for safe travel and that they may return refreshed. And as a congregation here today, we pray that we might be refreshed over these holidays. That... God's word would lead us to the cross, that we may find ourselves planted where it is good, 
and also that during this season we may be able to find rest and recreation, recreation, as we go through this next season of the year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving God, we pray for healing of body, mind, and spirit for all who are in need of that healing today. We pray for those whose lives are darkened by any kind of pain, distress, grief, that the light of Christ may bring comfort, hope, and a sense of your all-encompassing love. In a moment of silence, we bring before God those known to us or even ourselves who need God's healing touch today. We particularly pray for Ted Ray and his family at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We, just before we conclude our prayers, um, we just simply take a moment uh, remembering that we, sell, we rejoice with those who rejoice and we mourn with those who mourn. And um, in this season of celebration, um, we simply pray for Sarah Louise and David as they uh, continue this journey of their life together. And we just simply pray for them, Lord. We thank you for Sarah Louise and for David and pray, Lord, for um, you bringing them together and also, Lord, for the myriad of decisions they're going to be making in the, in the weeks and months and years that lie ahead. And we simply pray, Lord, for your guidance for them and, Lord, your blessing upon them as they... Uh, as they're at an exciting time and moment in their lives, Lord. Pray your blessing and your protection upon them. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So just coming to our announcements, um, a couple of things. Uh, Next week, we will have amongst us our uh, Link Parish of St. Thomas's um, from Aldridge. It's a link that the diocese has with the Diocese of Litchfield. Um, St. Thomas's Aldridge is a, a church very similar to this sort of layout. Um, the vicar is um, the, uh, on TikTok. He is TikTok vicar. Um, and is extremely creative um, and he is really looking forward to, to coming amongst us. So Reverend uh, David Sims and he is one member of his congregation coming as well. So they'll be here. So they'll be in St. Peter's to start with and then coming here. And there's, a, I th I'm looking to make sure that there is a bring and share lunch. There is a bring and share lunch. Is, there is a bring and share lunch. Excellent. They'll be coming for lunch. Um, so there'll be a couple of, um, so that'll be next week here. Um, they'll also um, be going to uh, Blarney Castle after the bring and share lunch. So I need a little bit of help here. Saturday uh, lunchtime um, from 11.30 till about four o'clock, um, I'm, we're organizing one of the Red Bus tours in Cork City um, to bring uh, him, or bring the two of them, plus a few others um, to, around the city. And there's also a tour organized of the beautiful, splendid, uh, incredibly 
Um, what other words can I use? Um, of St Finbar's Cathedral. Um, and there's a tour booked around St Finbar's Cathedral. There's also uh, um, going up the Tower of St Anne's to ring the, the bells of St Anne's in Shandon. So if you would be interested in being tour guide and accompanying uh, these two around um, Cork City on Saturday afternoon, um, I think I have probably about four tickets. Um, so if you'd be interested, um, do let me know and I can point you or, uh, or let the office know during the week and I will organise that. Also on Sunday afternoon, I have arranged 10 tickets for Blarney Castle. So if you would love to go and, and explore the grounds and the fascinating history and uh, beauty of the gardens, please do let me know because I can get you in for free. Not that I'm peddling uh, Blarney Castle or that the service is sponsored in any way by Blarney Castle Estates. Um, but if Sir Charles is watching, thank you very much for... Um, so um, if you would like to, um, to accompany the guys around Blarney Castle next Sunday afternoon, if you let me know as well, it would be great to have a group. Um, or if you, have a, if you have a Blarney Castle pass and you would like to come and join us, that's also very good as well. So that's St Thomas's. Next week um, are coming there. Uh, are coming here and we will uh, look forward to all of that. Also next Sunday at 11.30 in Blarney we are having our, um, an experiment of Wild Church at 11.30 and that's a service probably outdoors um, um, and if it's raining it is going to be, yeah. So, it, it is, so that, that um, service is at 11.30 uh, next Sunday in Blarney as well. Um, all, one other thing is that on the, just in case people are going off on holidays and taking a break during July, the fourth Sunday in July, we're having a big family picnic out in Inniscarra. So I'm putting this out four weeks in advance and there'll be announcements every week from now on so that people don't turn up at the Carrick Centre. So at 11.30 on the last Sunday of July, we're going to have a big family picnic out in Inniscarra after, there, after the service there. Okay, now, can anybody remember where the uh, fire assembly point is? Where is it? Out by the bike shed on the grass. Make sure when you're sta when, if you do go, if you ever happen to go to the fire assembly point, do not stand on Connor. Not now. Not now. Just uh, just <laughs> Connors. So um, just to remind you, should this happen, maybe sometime after the blessing. Okay. So, um, but we are going to worship God together. Just let's worship God together. Okay, we have um, two songs together to finish off with and uh, just the thinking with these two is the first one is Ancient of Days which I find a really reassuring song because it talks about all the things that are going on in the world that maybe don't make sense to us and we can't understand and we wonder is it all in God's hands but it is because he is the same yesterday, today and forever, the Ancient of Days and then we're going to finish with Build Your Kingdom Here which I think is a great kind of going out um, to proclaim God. Um, helpful um, words to this song um, just in preparation for heading out and those words you will see in the chorus I will leave it at that okay let's worship God
Heavenly Father, we pray take us and use us to build your kingdom here in our communities. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Just before we go, I just want to also simply pray uh, for Julie. Um, as she, I, where is Julie? Ah, Julie's there. Hopefully it's all right to pray for you. Uh, <laughs> um, Father, just thank you for Julie, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you uh, have placed her here in this place. And also, Lord, thank you for the next stage, this next stage of her life as um, she retires and as she uh, takes time to, to draw upon your deep uh, you're on the, on the deep nutrients in your soil. Come, Holy Spirit, help her and empower her. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Let's presume the fire. There we go. Excellent. Let's go.